That's it. So, hi, Alec. Hello. Hello. We're here in yeah. Center Traffic, and yes. you've got something that's pretty special, I suppose. Yes. Uh, what we have here is the Behringer DeepMind 12. And you've known about this for quite some time. I right? have, yes. Um, um, so, so, first of all, I suppose yeah. we need to know what exactly it is. It is a 12 voice fully analog uh, synthesizer with digital effects. Uh, Added to that, there's an arpeggiator, a control sequencer, there's a modulation matrix. Um, there's three envelopes. There's a low pass filter, either four pole or two pole. There's a high pass filter. Uh, there's two DCOs. One will have a sawtooth or a square wave, which you can PWM. Then we have a second oscillator, which is square wave, which has the tone mode thing, uh, which is something like, I think it's P PWM, but the, in sound, the sound wise, it's, uh, it, it has a different character. I don't know. Um, it's probably something, it's probably PWM, but it sounds different than the PWM in the first oscillator, I have to say. So if I go to, um, go find, uh, Default patch here. Switch of the odd for now. And the effects are still on. Let's get rid of the effects for a minute. There's four effects. And can they be rooted differently? Yes, there's various routings, routing options. I'm just getting rid of the ex effects for a minute just to hear the dry sound. So, yeah. Um, just to quickly show you, you can either have insert effects or send effects, uh, and there's various uh, ways to root them. How did we do that again? Here you go. Lots of different routing options, actually. The most simple option is like back-to-back, uh, -back. and then there's uh, the first two parallel and the three and four in series, uh, one and three parallel, two and four parallel. So yeah, plenty of options there. Uh, you can put it into send mode here and then use this and then you have four effects in send mode, which is a good starting point. And how, uh, how have you found it to program? It, I, I, this is a prototype. Uh, I didn't get a manual with it and I haven't needed a manual at all. Everything is, it's the, the user interface is really user friendly. I mean, I've not needed to look at a manual at all. I've just been programming. It's really easy, yeah. Everything basically speaks for itself. So. Now we're hearing just the first oscillator. And if we switch off that and go into the second oscillator. You hear what I mean? It's a different sound than the video that you have on the first one. Yeah, so. So, as well as, uh, so two oscillators per voice. Yes. Um, two LFOs as well. Yes. And an arpeggio. Yeah, and a control sequencer. And um, in terms of routing LFOs, is there mm -hmm. like a modulation matrix? Yes, there is. Uh, if you go next to the uh, screen, you have the mod button. And there we have a modulation matrix where you can choose various sources. And go into your depth. Let's say we'll do uh, the mod wheel to, well, here we go. LFO. Basically, up to now I've seen every parameter. I'm not sure if they're all in there, but most of the parameters in there, you seem to love smart things like all attack, envelope rates in general, all decay, all sustain, or just the uh, rates for envelope two. Uh, curves. The, the, the great thing about this is you can uh, choose curves for the envelopes. We'll get to that later. Um, but all the separate uh, parameters are also there. So like uh, envelope two, attack curve, uh, decay curve. Go crazy. VCA gain, VCA panning, unison detune, uh, para parameter drift, which is really a fun, fun function in the machine, I think. 
So what, what is parameter drift? Parameter drift, okay. Where was that again? Uh, I think it's in here. If you turn that up, it will do, uh, it's, it will start drifting the parameters around. It will start the, so drifting almost, the values. So almost like a randomization sort of A thing. little bit, yeah, yeah. But based on, say, an LFO or your envelope or? I think it's, 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 it's based on a random source. Uh, you can give it a rate though. Uh, there's also DCO drift, which we know, of course, from, you know, which detunes uh, the oscillators in a random way to get a little bit more of an analog feel, although it's already analog. But of course, be, it being DCOs, the, the, uh, they're really uh, the tracking totally tight. Yeah. So yeah. moving on to uh, this end of the synth, mm -hmm. we have uh, VCF. Yes, uh, uh, a low pass filter, which can be either two pole or four pole. Uh, with a resonance, of course. It's in four pole mode now, and it's all the way down. What did I do? Mm -hmm. No. There you go. That's the filter. Two pole mode. Back to four pole mode, turn the resonance up halfway. And all the way. So yes, that will kill your speakers at some point. And of course, the uh, filter is, it, it, it can track the keys. Uh, so you could use it as an extra sine wave oscillator if you want to. Uh, let's see if we can do that quickly. Oh, no, I'd have to do that in the mod matrix. So I go, where's the key number? Find that note number, depth all the way up, data entry slider. And we go to where VS, VCF frequency. So that's... You're just playing the filter now. I'm playing the filter. That's a, you're hearing the filter on full resonance. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there's also a high pass filter. Do you know what, um, what slope the high pass filter is? I don't. Uh, I have a feeling... If it's something like a two pole, but I'm not sure. And then there's this funny button under the uh, high pass filter, it's called boost, which gives you some extra low end, which is nice for bass patches. With the high pass filter, I'm not entirely sure. So it could be like a, a resonance switch for the for the high pass filter. Envelopes, three of them, regular uh, attack, decay, sustain, release. But you have the curves option, which means when I change that, so is that kind of like linear exponential? Absolutely, yes, it is. Uh, I should be able to get that. Logarithmic, etc. Yeah, here we go. I'm in curves. Yeah. So, if it's so you can map you can map a, um, something to change the curves. Yes, you can you can uh, modulate that with something. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's get the sustain down a bit so you can actually see what's happening there. Oh, I'm I'm only changing the curves now, so you can also change the, the sustain curve to be, you know, either proper sustain or another rise or decay parameter. That's pretty sweet. Turn the decay up and go to curves again. So now I'm changing the decay, and now I'm changing the decay curve from logarithmic rhythmic to linear to exponential. And uh, you can do that for every uh, uh, envelope parameter. And you have three of them, one for the VCA, one for the VCF, and one called mod, which is routable anywhere through the modulation matrix. Um, and the arpeggiator and sequencer, does um, that... Um and the arpeggiator is a really fun one because it, uh, let me find a, a patch that works with the arp. And not some 
patch that are already programmed in our paginator on, like this one. So we're switching the arpeggiator on and for fun just tap the hold button. That's your regular arpeggiator. If you press edit, we get all kinds of options in the screen over here. Key sync, octave switch. Then we have the modes, up, down, up, inver up down, up inverted, down inverted, up down inverted. Up alternating, I think. Down alternating, I think. Random. So we can do uh, how we like the wolf if we want. As played. And a chord function, which is really nice for stops. Also, if we go back to a regular up arpeggiator, we have patterns, which give a kind of swing to the whole thing. You can hear. Let's go to one of the user patterns. I don't think there's all, those are all programmed already. Here we go. If I press edit again now, uh, you can see I have a couple of options here to change the stuff. Length of the pattern, uh, velocity of the step, gate length of the step. So is this is the sequencer kind of like an SH101 style sort of like not um, the notes? This is not even the sequencer yet. This is, these are patterns for the arpeggiator. Okay, okay. And no, the sequencer is not SH101 style. Um, if we go back here, switch off the arpeggiator for a minute. Um, what was it again? I have to think for a minute. Get out of this mode. Yes. Press edit again. If I press edit again now, I dive into the control sequencer. Here we go. Uh, you can enable it, uh, have a clock division on it, which is really sweet, of course, for polyrhythmic stuff. And obviously yeah. that's uh, clockable to MIDI. Yes, it is, yes. Swing. But then you can divide it down and... Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So now, if I step to sequence and press here, no, I'll probably press edit again. Now we have uh, the sequencer. And the pattern length is now 12 steps, value, this is how you edit the sequencer. And is the, is the sequencer independent of the, uh, of the arpeggiator? Uh, yes, it is. Yes. So you can use the you sequencer use as, a con as a modulation source exactly. rather, rather than that's, just sequencing that's, pitch? It's, it's more geared to modulation source than uh, a sequencing pitch, I think. You think you can do it both if you want to, but it's, uh, I find it, I, I have the idea it's more fun as a modulation source. So, so you've just rooted that to the, uh, to the fi uh, filter frequency, yeah. right? Um, there's various edit knobs underneath uh, the various sections. If you go into, for instance, the edit knob of LF01, you have some extra parameters which you can choose. For instance, the uh, uh, wave of your LFO, um, uh, the rate of the LFO. I mean, of course, you can use a slider for that as well. Uh, but you have some more detail. Key sync, arpeggiator sync, uh, slew rate of the LFO. That's the one I really like. Uh, and I'm not sure what that phase thing does. Um, not entirely sure what that is. I, it's very well possible that you actually have uh, LFO for every voice. Uh, so the, the LFOs are actually polyphonics, not one LFO running over all the voices. Um, but I'm not entirely sure about that. If you look into the second LFO, it's basically the same. If you go into the oscillator edit menu, uh, the first screen is DCO one parameters. So you can change the range. I uh, have some modulation sources here already that are standard. The PM, PWM source, for instance, you could put to... LFO2, this is a saw patch, you don't hear the PDO at PDM. Second page is the DCO2 parameters, that's where they are. Also, again, range, a couple of modulation sources, and um, uh, the source for the tone modulation thingy. Um, so, ba basic, basically, 
So basically, you've kind of got, as well as the uh, the front level, the front panel controls. Yeah. Once you start you've got hitting, a deeper level. yeah, you've yeah. got a much deeper level. Yeah, and you can it get. gives you a lot more sound mangling possibilities, uh, sound shaping possibilities, I should say. For so as um, a vintage synth aficionado, aficionado, yes. yes. Um, how does it rate in comparison to some classic synths, would you say? Um, obviously, the layout reminds you of a Juno instantly, and it has a bit of that character. Then again, it goes a lot further than a Juno ever would be able to go. Um, that, with the effects added, uh, it gives so much more options. But, you know, the basic sound is Juno-ish, I'd say, or JX3P-ish. That's the best thing. I mean, it won't be a Jupiter 8, but... Um, I, you know, f for instance, for stage use, I, I, I think this this would be a great choice because you get actual. It, it does really sound very nice and analogy, and it's very compact as well. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Um, I know I know people have been complaining that it's just four octaves, uh, but you know the 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 downside of that is of course that you have an octave left. The plus side of it is that this you can almost take in your backpack. Yeah, yeah. So there's some more edit menus if you want to have a look at them. For instance, at the poly uh, section, the Unison detune knob, there we have uh, the amount of polyphony you want to use. And there's a lot of options there. You have full polyphonic, 12 voices, uh, two oscillators, the four oscillators per voice. So it's uh, Unison 2, Unison 3, then it becomes like, a, so now it's a six voice, now it's a four voice, and now it's, uh, is it, am I talking? Now it's a three voice. Uh, two voice and all the oscillators at once. Monophonic, just uh, and there's various modes that I ha I should dive into a little bit more. I'm not entirely sure what they do, but there's the monophonic mode will do one oscillator per voice, but you can do the mono legato thing, uh, I guess. So on polyphonic. Uh, then we have the unison detune thing, which is uh, quite a smashing. Uh, let me put it down first. So this is simple unison, and now I'll start. I'll start turning up the unison to tune. This gives really broad sounds instantly, and uh, that's good fun. Other parameters here are uh, uh, note priority things. Last, lowest, or highest, uh, triggering, re-trigger legato, one shot, all kinds of options. The DCO drift, you know, uh, like we see on other uh, synthesizers where you can have the DCOs drift a little bit like they would do as they were uh, uh, VCO. Uh, parameter drift, which we just talked about, uh, random, slight randomizations of the parameters and a, a rate for that drift. Also in the filter, we have the bass boost option, which is just a knob, but you can also see it in the screen. Velocity sensitivity, a couple of modulation sources. Uh, what else? We have the VCA edit screen. That's one I like. Pan spread, envelope depth is there, velocity sensitivity. Pan spread will spread your voices out either not at all. And if you go all the way up. It will spread the voices out slightly to left and right, which gives obviously a broader sound. Yeah. So I think we've pretty much covered it. Ooh. We should still. There's still a couple of more things I'd like to show you. So sh should we hear some of the effects, maybe? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. For instance, on this sound, we have a chorus effect going on. Let me. Uh, if I go into here, we have the chorus editor. Uh, there's the mix parameter, turn that down. So that's without chorus. Turn the chorus back up again. There's all kinds of parameters, obviously speed, um, with left or with right, I'm not sure. Delay parameters, low cut, high cut. The phase of the chorus, uh, the kind of wave, modulation wave, and spread, I think. Um, you know, these parameters, uh, because I don't have the manual, I can't exactly say what they are, but uh, if you start playing around with them, fun stuff comes out. So, um, in terms of how many like different multi-effects, what do you know what they are? Okay. Yeah. 
So it starts out with a whole reverb. There's actually add one thing I need to say to the viewers. I'm not a keyboard player. So that's why you hear me do silly stuff mostly on black keys. So I, I can't play the keys at all. So, so I, I, li I, li I like the black keys too, it's fine. Okay, good. So we have a whole reverb, uh, we have a plate reverb, uh, a rich plate even, ambience, gated reverb, reverse, oh, reverse, uh, rack amp, which is a sort of uh, uh, amplifier thing, like uh, amp modeler, that's what I should say. Sorry about that. So you obviously here to get a little bit noisy now. Uh, let's get that out of the way again. After the rack amp, we have a mood filter, which is uh, yet another filter which we can use. Uh, a digital filter, though. A phaser, chorus, flanger. Modulation delay reverb or reverse, I'm not sure. I'll check that out. Simple delay, which is obviously uh, clockable to the tempo in the MIDI uh, uh, in various uh, divisions. Uh, f three tap, four tap delay, rotary speaker effect, chorus D. Uh, what would that be? Could that possibly be a model of the dimension D? Uh, it seems that way. So, because when you edit that, hey, there's your four switches which you can turn off and on. A bit softer chorus effect. So go back there, and then we have an enhancer. Uh, Edison EX1, I think that's the Behringer enhancer, isn't it? So I think they modeled that. I'm not entirely, entirely sure what that is. Auto panning, T ray delay. Hmm. Basically, kind of like every effect that you would want yeah. to put your synthesizer through. There's a TC through, reverb, yeah. Probably a few things that you wouldn't think about putting your, your synthesizer exactly. through. Exactly. There's also some combinations. So here you have flanger and reverb, chorus and reverb, delay and reverb, chamber reverb, room reverb, vintage room, dual pitch, pitch shifters, EQ, uh, uh, obviously a model of a Fairchild compressor, multiband distortion, uh, and finally we've reached the end. <laughs> so, can you imagine, there's four of those, and each of those can hold all, uh, any of those, all those effects. And then there's a lot of different routing options, so there's a lot of creativity to be uh, enjoyed there. Obviously, it take a little bit more menu diving, but the option is there, and the act effects actually sound good. Um, can you uh, modulate some of the parameters of the effects with the, uh, through the modulation mm -hmm. matrix? That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Let's see. I haven't seen the full list. Oh, here we go. Effects 1 and various options. As soon as you uh, uh, have an effect in the slot, the uh, modulation options will turn up here. Yeah. So basically, every single parameter can be modulated it seems by that way, yeah. something. And also, uh, something I found was that as soon as you have a modulation thing going here, uh, the modulation uh, uh, matrix itself becomes an option, where was it, no... So then you can modulate the amount of the m modulation yes, yes, in the matrix. Some, yes, but where was it now? Yeah, I, I've seen it, I can't, node number, no, no, control, over one, it's controls, MIDI controls, I can't find it at the moment, but uh, I've it's seen definitely it, so there. It, it's there, yeah. it's there, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that and the curves of the envelope, which I think are, are crazy because I'm a sucker for exponential uh, uh, envelope curves. Uh, portamento, octave switches, uh, if you need different things. LFO waveforms, very interesting. There's a sample and glide parameter uh, uh, option there. So it's not a sample and hold, sample and glide. It will, it's something like, maybe like the Wogelbach waveform, like in the module, maybe that's it. That's it. Fun thing, something with a bit of a slew on it, yeah. And then we haven't even talked about the chord memory stuff. So, chord memory right there, but there's also a polychord function, and I haven't tried that out really good yet, but it seems that the thing you can do is you can program a chord and assign it to a key, Program another chord, assign that to a key, so you can make like a progression. And 
if you're like me and can't play keyboards, you can actually play some chords uh, in, a, in a nice rhythm. So, that concludes the architecture of the machine, I think. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. <laughs>